I talk a lot about planting cover crops, especially in my animal forage grazing spaces. But am I actually doing it or am I just all talk? Let's go check out my pastures. So we're nearing high summer. It's end of July here in central New Jersey. And I thought we would check in on what my pastures look like. In the spring, I shared a video about what cover crops look like for our homestead. So what we do here is triticale, uh, forage turnip. We do bursting clover and uh, annual ryegrass. And the reason that we do things is because they contribute different things to the soil. So our forage turnip is going to help with compaction as it expands. These are not turnips that are used for harvest. They're kept in the soil. I'll show you what that looks like. We use bursium clover because it's a good um, erosion control, nitrogen fixer, attracts beneficial insects. It's a great green manure. We use tritted kale because it's really good forage for the animals. Um, it grows quickly, same with the ryegrass, but again, they also contribute their own benefits to the soil. The thing about cover crops is we're looking to provide forage to our animals while meeting their calorie, crude protein, and nutritional requirements um, while giving back more to the soil than what we're taking it taking from it. Um, that's why I believe in doing cover crops and not just something like grass. Okay, grass is really great forage for horses and, and ruminants, but here's the thing, um, it doesn't really do anything for soil except erosion control. So I like to get more bang for my buck, feed my animals and feed my soil at the same time. It contributes to good quality soil structure. We have a more resilient farm, blah, blah, blah. I've talked about that a lot before in my other videos. Regardless of whether you're growing cover crops or grass, you wanna reduce um, overgrazing. And the way to do that is to remove your animals from that particular space when the forage reaches a height of four inches. Anything that's grazed below the four inch mark is considered overgrazed. And not only does that open up um, a great passageway for parasite ingestion because there's close contact between the larva at the base of the forage stem and the animal's mouth, but the other thing that it does is creates really slow regenerative growth. And so if you can stay above the four inch mark, your forage is gonna grow back faster, which means you're gonna have more food for your animals. If you're um, sowing things like vetch or um, alfalfa or other legumes, you're gonna to wanna to wait until that reaches a forage height of 10 to 12 inches tall. If you are growing things like annual ryegrass or clover, you wanna wait until that reaches eight to 10 inches tall. And that those heights are what you're trying to get to before you introduce your stock. When you have forage height that is eight to 10 and 10 to 12 inches tall, you're doing two things. You're ensuring that you have a lot of feed, quality forage. Number two, it's tall enough that when it's eaten down, it's gonna grow back quickly. Number three, um, some of it's gonna get trampled and it's gonna create a chop and drop situation where as the animals move through to graze, they're gonna mulch it naturally, drop it, and that is gonna create green cover, which is gonna return nutrients to the soil that way alongside the animals' droppings themselves. So we have a couple of things happening here, a couple of systems of play. It's really good for the health of your field and your animals. If you're interested in selecting cover crops specifically for your farm to meet the nutrient requirements of your animals, check out my book, The Sustainable Homestead. There's a lot of information in there on species specific cover crops. And then also the Rodale Institute is where I do um, a lot of my research and get a lot of my information from because they have a lot of tested, tried and true, really great information for all different growing zones and climates throughout the country. I know cover crops aren't the most exciting thing, but they do help your land and your soil a lot, and they do help to keep your animals healthy, especially in a rotational grazing circuit. So thank you for tuning in, I appreciate it.